Welcome to the demonstration of the new HTML5 GUI for VPlex version 6.2. After signing in with the username and password, you're given an option to use HTML5 GUI or the legacy Flash GUI. So we have selected the HTML5 version. Notice as with previous versions, we have a dashboard view. We can select system status, which you see here. You can click on, for example, directors and get information for each director. This example has a single engine, VPlex Local. Notice here we can click on version details and we can get the product version for the VPlex cluster. We can also obtain the cluster serial number. Next, we can look at the overall system health. You'll notice that many of the menus and choices are familiar. Most of the functionality is exactly the same, just the overall look and feel of the actual GUI is different. Here we can see cluster properties. Now let's take a look at the provision storage menu. Here we're looking at the view by storage volumes. You can, of course, change the cluster on a metro system, or you could change the actual view to include a number of VPlex items. You can see that everything is fairly familiar from VPlex versions in the past. The good thing is you can sort each particular column by, for instance, storage volume name, by health, by status, and by use. And if I scroll over to the right, you can see the other columns. Now let's change the view. Let's take a look at virtual volumes. In this example, we have one virtual volume configured. Notice it's not exported, meaning it's not in a storage view yet. Notice to the right, we have the virtual volume properties, where we can see all information about the selected virtual volume. We can look at a map, as in previous versions of VPlex. From here, we can select, for example, we're going to select two storage volumes. Notice that they are unclaimed. What we can do now is by selecting them, we can go to claim all storage on the particular array. And there's the array name. We could select the multiple different arrays. Now, since this is a VNX, it's going to ask you if you wanted to use a mapping file. In this example, we will not. We'll click next and notice the ones we selected are already on the right to be claimed. So, so we could select additional ones or we could just leave those two there. And now we can apply a base name, which is very useful for um, naming conventions and sort of finding things. Notice the concepts of provisioning are the same as in previous versions. It's just that some of the menus, the fonts, the views have changed. So here we can apply a base name. Notice we've selected new storage. And this is just for an example. And we can click finish. And notice it's been successful. And when now we look, notice to the right, you will see those two are listed as claimed. In this example, we have selected a particular storage volume and a claimed storage volume. And notice here, we can look at the ITLs for that storage volume. In this example, there are eight ITLs. Here we see a wizard used to create virtual volumes from a selected group of storage volumes. 
Now the wizard allows you to do this and create a virtual volume in one step, more or less. Of course, you can still go through and create each individual piece and um, put them together yourself. Here we can change the view and there's the new virtual volume that we have just created. So in this example, we can select the initiator view and we can see all initiators. Just in this example, we only see one. Notice it's unregistered. So of course you can refresh it in case you just zone some. And if I select it, I can go and register that particular um, initiator. Notice here, there's a quick wizard for rediscovering, meaning it will go out and look for newly zoned uh, initiators. Next, we'll go through quickly the process of registering an initiator. Notice I select more, register selected initiator, and it will register it. Next, we'll show an example of creating a storage view. So now I have um, virtual volumes that are unexported. I have one registered um, initiator. Of course, for this demonstration, I only have um, one initiator for that particular host registered. Obviously, you would want to have some form of multipathing. And as you can see, most of these menus are the same as in previous versions. That's the great thing about the new version is it doesn't require um, learning a whole new method of doing everything. Next, we'll add a virtual volume to our example of a storage view. And as you can see, now we have created a storage view. This concludes our demonstration of VPlex 6.2 HTML5 GUI. Thank you.